Hi folks, let's build a new surface grinder wheel balancer. Ever since we got the Okamoto surface grinder, which is really a pretty large grinder, I've really wanted to improve my skills with grinding and I wanted to get better using the smaller 6x12 Tormach surface grinder. One of the things I know is that the wheel wasn't balanced, so let's build our own wheel balancer. Two part series, today we're gonna to machine the two uprights. Fusion 360 CAD file available over on the NYC CNC website. If you're here for the entertainment, by all means sit here and watch along. If you're trying to become a better machinist, take a look at this part, hit pause, and think about how you would machine it. How would you fixture it? How would you work hold it? How many operations would you do it in? Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We had actually set the vise up in the normal y-axis orientation, and then I realized, no, I want it left to right or in the x-axis. And that's one of the nice things about having one of our fixture plates is makes it easier to make those changes and not worry about the hassle of retramming it, and it's really easy to hold the vise in that orientation. There's two benefits to doing this. One is that we're machining a six-inch part in a machine with only seven and a half inches of Y travel. So being able to hold the vise in this orientation allows me to adjust to get that vise just right and centered in the Y axis travel range. The other problem with mounting this six inch vise in the traditional Y axis is that the back edge of the vise is too big and it would actually crash into the column of the machine. So it literally just wouldn't work. The second benefit you'll see in a second, which is that it lets us quickly and repeatedly set up our OP2 fixture. Starting off with our Superfly, 3,000 RPMs, 45 inches per minute, about 1,140 millimeters per minute, 15 thousandths of an inch per tooth, or about 0.38 millimeters per tooth. We are now doing the bulk of the internal material removal here with the Shearhawk. Now notice all of my cam is staying on the inside of the part. That's what I figured is the best way to do this in two ops and make it an accurate part. 10,000 RPMs, 50 inches per minute, or about 1,270 millimeters per minute. That's 5 thousandths of an inch per tooth, or about 0.13 millimeters per tooth. 0.2 inch or 5 millimeter optimal load, and slightly more than that, 0.22, or about 5.6 millimeters depth of cut. I just love this tool, and I know I go on and on about it, but it's just so awesome. It's so free cutting. It does a great job removing this material, and it does what I want to do here, which is it sets us up to do the finish work with our quarter inch end mill. Before we do any sort of a contour or true finishing pass, we're going to do another 3D adaptive, but under geometry, we've got rest machining checked. So Fusion looks at what is the remaining stock. It's got a machine, which is pretty awesome, and that's why we get just work to be done in these little corners. All the RPMs we've got, two and a half thou feet per tooth, or about 0.063 millimeters. That's actually 75 inches per minute, or about 1,900 millimeters a minute, because of the three food end mill. So we're cooking 20% optimal load of the tool. 
And again, this is what I love about Pathpilot and the Tormach, the way it's able to handle the motion control. It's actually really nice. And you can see the chip that we're making is a real chip. It's a great chip. The, the tool is able to do work in an aluminum. This tool will last forever. And finally, coming in to do that internal cleanup 2D contour pass, that finishing strategy, same 10,000 RPMs, backing the feed down to one thou per tooth or about 0.025 millimeters, which ends up being 30 inches a minute or about 760 millimeters. Quick spot. And then a letter B drill running it at 2700 RPMs, 10.8 inch per minute plunge, or about 275 millimeters. It's just like we talked about in the high speed steel video on drilling steel. High speed steel drills actually do a great job in an aluminum especially, they're gonna last a really long time. A Little bit of a heavier chamfer than normal, 6100 RPMs, three thou per tooth, or about 0.076 millimeters per tooth. That's 37 inches per minute, or about 178 millimeters per minute. Okay, we're done. How are you going to machine up to? How are you gonna hold this part? Here's what we came up with. We pulled the hard jaw off of our movable vice jaw, and we moved it to the backside. And that let us put in one of the Saunders Machine Works mini pallets that you see here, card here if you'd like to buy one of those. And we can now use the dowel pins to accurately locate that. Now when I first set this up, I made a pretty amateur mistake. I'm actually gonna pause the video here, take a look. Big mistake, I realized it quickly, but I'm embarrassed I even showed it. Here, the clamping force would actually be lifting the mini pallet up because this jack screw on the back end is pushing against the jaw, not what it's actually screwed to itself. So the way we did the toolpath cam, we've got a single op two. We set our work coordinate system to the center of this. That let us find existing geometry that we machined to confirm that we had had the right X, Y location. And then the Z location is just the top of our mini pallet. We then use the setup manual NC to do two things. We put in this comment that says remove strap clamps. I could probably even say from left side. And then we also, to make that comment really work so it doesn't just blow through that and you don't see it, you put in an option stop. When you have M01 brake selected, that means that the machine is going to stop when it sees this M1 command. I put the comment above it or before it. That way when it gets to this point, I can easily see right before, ah, okay, remove the strap clamp from the left side. So starting off with the shear hog, anytime you're doing a new fixturing, obviously I recommend that you take it easy. And I had thought about not using the shear hog because it is a little bit more of a violent tool. The fact that it's a single flute, it can push a little bit more chatter, requires a more rigid setup. However, it worked great. On our shear hog, I did back down the feed rate. We were at 50 inches per minute in the first operation. Here I backed it down to 40 inches a minute, or about 1,000 millimeters per minute, or 4 thou feed per tooth, about 0.1 millimeters. In my experience too, just watching this toolpath for a minute, you're gonna see, is this fixture gonna hold up? Is it gonna last? We've got plenty of clamping power here between the two strap clamps across the center of the mini pallet, as well as the two on the left side. If you're going to do this though, another thing I would recommend, use torque wrenches, not only to apply the right amount of torque, but to avoid too little or too much, and as you repeat this process and put replace the parts, to be consistent. There's nothing worse than building a confidence and thinking you've got something down, only to have the fifth part or the 15th part come loose in a fixture and maybe ruin your fixture or break a tool. So we removed those two clamps. We now in the same operation, the same setup, can machine that back edge. We're doing it in a few step downs just to make sure we don't overload the tool. This is a saw cut edge, so we're not exactly sure how much material is uh, always going to be there. 10,000 RPMs, 1,000 per tooth, the same as our finishing feed rate from op one on the inside area. Look at those chips though, awesome, and a great surface finish. Finally, the shear hog couldn't get into this tall nook here, so we've got a rest machining 3D adaptive that's going to come in, again, at our faster feed rate for our quarter inch end mill. This, I think, is just an awesome example of showing how nice it is to see the tool path and the machine combining together. Really cool. Always remember in your adaptive on the linking tab to boost your no engagement feed rate. Mine's at 75 here. It really should be at your machine's maximum travel rate. And coming around for a finishing cleanup, 
Again, it's super nice to have access to all the sides of this part in one setup. That's cool. Chamfering around the edge gives it a really nice look. Quick tip or trick on selecting that chamfer. We don't want to chamfer this back edge. It can be annoying to go have to go click every single one of these 13 chains around the periphery of the part. So let's show this from scratch. I'll delete my selection. If I hover my mouse right here, I'm gonna click once with the left mouse button. Now, that's great, except again, it's got this back edge that we don't want, and we actually don't really want this uh, little part right here. I'm gonna left click and hold, and then let up. I'm gonna change this from a closed contour to an open contour. What that did is it left only the original selection that I picked, which is this left edge right here. So I can actually just orbit over here. So I picked the last edge, but again, it's going the shortest route possible. Now just hover your mouse to the left side and it updates that. Before you click anything else, click the green plus to accept and voila, you pick that whole chain the easy way. One down, one more to go. We th set up the GoPro with a time lapse just to run through this one. It's the same thing, but it is a really nice workflow and it's a really nice setup. I would funny because when I first done this, I thought, I wonder if I can get by of not having to move the vise or switch it up or change the work holding. And I'm so glad that I did. It's uh, one of those things like from our organization video, you make better decisions as a machinist or as a business owner when the right tool, the tool that you want is nearby. That's cool. In part two, we're gonna machine the bottom base. We're gonna put it all together. We're also gonna talk about sending this out to get anodized. We'll see how that turns out. And then most importantly, we're gonna see how it works. Thanks for watching, folks. Take care. See you next Wednesday.